passages of scripture out of the Old Testament. That God will encourage you in the midst of the pandemic. The strength of all of us is the faith that we have. We will trust God. Oh God, hallelujah. We're 
going to read scripture you're hearing this morning, a very familiar scripture from the 100 Psalms. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. If you have a request, you may speak them out at this time if, before we go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord is still answering prayers, and he's still performing miracles because he is a prayer answering God. Father, we come before you, giving your name, glory, honor, and thanks that is due unto you. Where would we be today if you did not love us? Where would we be today if you did not care? Where would we be if you had not sacrificed your life for us? But we're so glad that you did. And for everything you've done for us on this morning, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, and we love you, and we praise you, and you are worthy of all glory and honor. We're going to look into the hills from which cometh our help, because we know that all our help comes from you. We ask that you would strengthen us on today. Help us on today, God. Heal us on today, God. Wipe tears on today, God. Lord, bless us, God, that we may put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, God, because there's joy in this place. There's peace and happiness in this place. And there's a praise down on the inside. And, God, we're grateful. And, God, we're thankful. And we give you all glory, praise, and honor that is due unto you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I do pray. At this time, we're going to turn the service over into the hands of our men's ministry. Why don't you give them a warm thunderous applause as they come. After the men's ministry, the next speak will be coming forth as a speaker for the hour on today. Maybe our pastor, Bishop Lorenzo Hall, or whoever is going to speak. We honor you today, sir, and we thank God for you. And may God bless you in Jesus' name. as a child in my mother's care I never will forget my mother told me Sing. Jesus will always be there oh my now I'm a grown man Living on my own, oh my, I can truly say, Jesus will never left me alone. Every now and then I have to say, Lord. Once in a while, I have to tell him, Lord, Lord, my, 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 my. Let me say that verse again, y'all. Growing up as a child in my mother's care, oh my, my mother told me. That Jesus will always be there. Thank you, Lord. Now, 
I'm a grown man. Listen, living, 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 living on my own. I can truly say that Jesus will never, he never left me alone, y'all. Every now and then I have to say, Lord, Can we say that again, y'all? Lord, Lord, I'm on you. Let's go a little bit further when I say this right here. I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending on you. Can I get one witness out there? Anybody depending on Jesus? I'm depending. I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending on you. Can I get one more witness? Anybody depending on Jesus? I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending on you. Let's go a little bit further when I say this right here. I'm depending, I'm depending, I'm depending. When my money gets funny, I'm when my change gets strange, I'm when my friends get few, I'm don't know what to do, I'm depending, I'm depending on Jesus, I'm depending, I'm depending on Jesus, I'm depending on Jesus, 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 I love him. Jesus, I need him. Jesus, I want him. Jesus, gotta have him. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus. There's power in that name, healing in that name. Jesus, Jesus, I love him. Jesus, I need him. Jesus, I want him. Jesus, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, 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 he even tremble. At that name, demons tremble. At that name, salvation. At that name, healing. At that name, deliverance. At that name, salvation. At that name, salvation. At that name, I love him. Jesus, I need him. Jesus, I want him. Jesus, I love him. Jesus, I need him. Jesus, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have. Gotta have. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I love him. Jesus, do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you love it? Jesus. Mama, mama, mama. Oh, Lord. One more time, Lord, Lord, Mama, Mama, I'm depending on you. Are you depending on Him? How many of y'all depending on the Lord today? Y'all depending on him, you know it's about. Come on. Now. 
Amen. Come on in and give the male chorus. Come on and give them another round of applause. The battle that we are in, it thickens every day. The battle that we are going through, it is not going away. But it is how we adjust to the battle what makes the difference. And that's what we need to be focused on today. They, that first song that they rendered, pretty much I can entitle the message after that because of what the song said. Even though it had mother in it, but um, we can still honor mother, but the song centered around, Lord, I am depending on you. And that was significant for me in regard to what the message is going to be about today. We're celebrating today. I don't have flowers or anything like that to give to you mothers on today, but I give the love of the Lord to you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you have contributed to life for having our sisters, our brothers, marrying our fathers, or at least you are with them. Thank you, because if it wasn't for the union, none of us would be here. So to our mothers, we owe a great deal of respect and honor for who they are, and give them a big round of applause. Thank you. I'm fortunate, I'm fortunate that my mother is here today, and I'm thankful to God for that. Uh, could have been, could have been, could have been, until uh, uh, I'll talk to my family a little later on today. I said, out of 19 children, I think 10 girls, nine boys all together, 19. And my grandfather wasn't a rolling stone. He just had right many children. His first wife died with five children to that union. And to my mother's siblings, other siblings, they were all born, uh, the 14 of them. She was the seventh of them. And only two of them remain now. Only two. All of her brothers and sisters uh, but one are deceased. And I think about it a lot. Why church, if why giving your life to the Lord is so important, the only remaining sibling that she has is the brother that gave his life to the Lord. And I thank God, I said, in the end, he is the one that maybe some thought that wouldn't, but to God be the glory. Happy Mother's Day, Mother Hall. Francis Elaine Hall. To my wife on, on Mother's Day, um, even though we didn't have together children biologically, and I gave her a card that said, and I told her personally, I said, you would have made a great mother because I looked at Lois in regard to her mother, who was a great mother and woman of God that, that loved her children, and I see those characteristics in Lois. So I told her, I said, you would have made a great mother. She said, thank you. I won't be long for, before you because I know that many of you, you've got some things prepared uh, for your mother in some way, somehow, and as do we. And so for that cause, I, I won't keep you as long. Elder Kennedy, that song, the first song. Um, see, all of the brothers put their mics down and went back. Y'all may have to stand where you are and just, I, I want you to give, um, there's a part in that song, I'm depending on you. It's the chorus. Can y'all just do that? Y'all don't have to come up, just where you are. See, now, in, in, in this space, you're going to tell where the harmony is coming from. So just sing. So just sing. Lord, I'm depending on you. 
Listen at the words. I want that to register with you. Where is your trust? Lord, oh, Lord, my, 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 my. I'm depending on you. Mm. Everybody say it. Come on, congregation. I'm depending on you. They've already talked about mother, but you she's gone now. Our attention Lord, is on. Lord, oh, Lord, I'm depending on you. Yeah. You've been so good to me, Jesus. Lord, Lord, down through the years, I'm depending on you. up as a child in my mother's care <laughs> oh, my. memories memories my mother told me oh Lord. son Jesus will always, always be there, be there. Yeah. oh my now I'm a grown man living living on my own, I can truly say, Jesus, he ain't never left me alone. Thank you, Every Lord. Every now and then I have to say, Lord, oh, Lord. I'm depending on you. Amen. Lord, I am depending on you. Now, I want you to recognize from the scripture, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We honor all of our preachers of the gospel today. God bless each of you in your respective places. Mass deceive me at times. I can't uh, make out faces behind the mass. But I do thank all of our preachers for your continued support in this time. To our deacon brothers, I thank you. To our ministry of sisters, thank you always for your endeavoring love, support for the Reach Out Apostolic Ministry. And I thank God for the laity, for your input, and for our music, the singers. And I am just thankful to God because God has kept us for a time like this, and I am thankful that we are still alive to be able to give God glory, to worship with our brothers and our sisters, to thank God for how he has brought us through, and he's keeping us in the midst of a pandemic. Here we are still here. I would, the thankful folk would clap your hands and praise God for his goodness, how he has been a blessing in your life. Oh my God, I appreciate him to the highest. Oh God, he never failed me yet. What a mighty God we serve. Never has he failed us. And we thank God for his goodness, grace, mercy. God bless you. Give me a few minutes. Thank God for all of our visitors that are here today. I know I'm my brother Deacon from Danville. I, I know he's here, but somebody else may be. I don't know if you are. Thank you for your presence uh, and being here with us to Brother Dominique's mother. I see you're here on Mother's Day. Good to see you. And I, I suppose that's your daughter beside you. So good to see his family here with him. And I want to just share with you for a few moments of your time out of the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 33 through 35. I will read this, then I will come back a little later. Uh, stand with me as we read, or as I read. You just follow along with me silently. Verse 33. Partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, 
both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whiles ye became companions of them that were so used. Hmm. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. 35, our thought. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Lord, I'm dependent on you. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Mark that verse in particular. The others were just for an accompaniment, but uh, our thought will come from verse 35. Pray with me, our God and our Father, we honor you today. We are honoring mothers, but God, you get the glory, the ultimate honor, because you gave us our mothers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you just for the activity and the use of our limbs this morning. Thank you for just watching over us from last Sunday to this Sunday war. Oh, God, we are still here. And Lord, I thank you, I, along with others, we appreciate you, we clap our hands, we lift our voice, and we direct our hearts and our minds toward you with thanksgiving. It is you that has brought us here. It is you that has blessed us to be here. I know I love my mother and others love their mother because she didn't guide me over the highways today. But Lord, we honor you in that. And now set your glory and love upon all of the mothers, our mothers today. And as we honor them, as we bless them in the midst of the service and pay homage to them, Oh, God, for their service and being who they are. Bless us now in the furtherance of the service, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Today's message is actually a continuation from uh, last Sunday's message. It, it, it came back on me again earlier this week or the latter part of this week the Lord wanted me to continue but it's a little different last Sunday's message if you can recall I can because the word says that I can I can because the word says that I can God is conveying to you saints and to myself that he wants us to be stronger in our walk with him, in our faith in him, in our study of him, and in our prayers toward him. Worrying as we will not be deterred because of what's coming against us, but that our trust and our confidence will be in the Lord. He said, I want you to be able to stand flat and declare that God is my strength in the midst of whatever you are dealing with in life. It was this morning, Brother Wilbur, uh, it was about uh, 3 o'clock somewhere this morning. I, I, I didn't want to bother my wife. Something began to move in my, said, hold on, what's going on here? And being a diabetic, diabetic and I said, Maybe my blood sugar is dropping because I felt strange. And that normally does not happen to me at night like that. So my wife turned over and she was, well, I can't say how concerned she was. But she looked at me and she said, you all right? I said, yeah, I, I'm going to just go downstairs. I went downstairs and got me some crackers. And you know how we are if you are uh, suffering from that, that sickness, that ailment. And got me some crackers and and, and drink and just sat down a little while. Then all of a sudden, and, and how it began, it, it began to just, it fear tried to, I, but I said, no, Satan, you a liar. I said, the name of the Lord Jesus, this thing is going to leave here. We've got to learn to speak 
against anything that comes against us. We are God's people and he has empowered us with the gift of the Holy Ghost that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Have you that confidence in him today? Have you that confidence to believe that he will bring you out? I, I wish I had about 15 or 20 witnesses here. Yeah. Lord, I know that you can. I know that you're able. The devil has been trying to come against your family. Gene said in the song, you can't have my family, but you got to have your confidence planted in the Lord. Oh God, in trusting him. The word says that I can. As we move forward, our, our objective last week focused on the word, uh, being on the word. The word, the word, our objective and what the word and its promises bring to us. Uh, the word of God is established, as Paul states in the book of 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Here is how the word is stated and Paul conveys to this young protege. Teach this. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration. God, not from the seminary, not from Law Park High School. Uh, all all scripture Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It's going to benefit you when you know the scripture. It's going to benefit you when you follow the scripture. It's profitable to you. It is profitable for doctrine. In other words, for teaching. For teaching us how to live. How to get along with our brothers. How to live godly in an ungodly world. It's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. I know we don't like sometimes somebody to correct us, but it is profitable for doctrine and for reproof. And it is for correction. Don't get so upset when somebody tell you something that is right. Right? And you don't want to get your mouth off of me. Learn to be able to take some correction. Uh, listen, and it is for instruction. And that is what this doctrine is for. It will instruct you how to live right. How to treat everybody right. Sometimes in the church we can have and show favoritism. But that's not in Christ Jesus. Thank if God picked somebody over you and you didn't. Oh, you get upset with it. But God knows what he's doing. If there's anybody that can do it, it is the Lord because he knows us inside and out. Somebody give him glory. I'll give you a subject in just a moment. So today, so we continue today's message with a little twist, a little twist, wherein the focus today will be on another word in our key verse. And we've already read that. And that word is confidence. Confidence. Con not a confidence man, but confidence. You and I should have complete confidence in God, in his word. What hinders us when we do not have confidence? Then God can't fully bless us. Because we are not trusting him in all that we do. Colossians 3, 15 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when our confidence is established in him, I promise you, you can move mountains. Oh, God, uh, somebody give him some praise, right? When he has blessed us and our confidence is there, so we continue with this word, confidence. And, and what we have when we have confidence in God Believing that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Our message from the Lord today, his message to us today is we, that we be established, rooted, and settled, and grounded with overrunning confidence. Some of us had more confidence in our cars. And it'll put you down when you least expect it. 
on a highway hundreds of miles ahead, it breaks down. But our confidence in God. Oh my God, can anybody understand what I'm saying? Your confidence, ah, confidence in God. So I, I want to be grounded more so in my confidence. In these times, regardless of the deterrence of life, and they come against us every day. Every day they come against us, but our confidence should be stronger every day. It should be stronger tomorrow than it is today. Clap right there if you believe that. It is a must. It is a prerequisite that, that we be filled with the power of God's spirit, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, not with an abundance of over-emotionalism. And, and see, emotionalism won't get you through your battles, but your confidence in God and in his word will bring you through every time. When you show God that, Lord, I'm going to trust you in the midst of my storm. As my young brother preached years ago at the death of his wife, he said, Lord, can you see the Lord in your storm? So when you learn to recognize that God's presence is right there with you while you are going through, your confidence is being built just for that moment. Ah, oh, give God the glory, everybody. Ah, we should be endowed with power. I seem like I'm a little emotional. Let me calm down. We should be endued with power from on high. Jesus references this in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It might be up there. I don't know, Sister Melissa, if you have it. But you shall, or ye shall, as the King James say, receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you after that now you have a certain amount of strength and power beforehand but you can't fight the devil with what you have so here's what the lord jesus say acts one and eight but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you in other words it shows you the value and the effect that the holy ghost will have in your life here's what he said that we would be like and ye shall be witnesses unto me in other words you will exemplify before your peers who i am in your life because they will see exploits of what i am doing in your life why because you have my spirit and with my spirit you now have confidence and when you have confidence you will not fear what the devil or what man may do or say about you why because your confidence is in jesus yeah, 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 yes. Ah, Lord, hey, I feel, I feel something a little different here. Huh? You shall be witnesses under me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. In other words, I'm going to bless you to be witnesses of me all around this region in Judea Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, there are no secret places. God said, I send you into the world. I send you as sheep among wolves. I'm not sending you to be comfortable. I'm not sending you to places that you just like. But I'm sending you into the world that you may be witnesses of me. But your confidence uh -huh. Oh God. Uh -huh. And with this inherent spiritual power, we become, who listen to this, giant killers. In other words, whatever Satan thinks he can overpower you with, uh, you can in Jesus' name. Get behind me, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus uh, on you. I plead the blood. Satan can't deal with this because now your confidence. At one time you would whimper and you would bow down and give in to Satan. But now your strength is in the power of the Lord. It is the power of his might. You're walking by 
faith of not by sight. Even though the thing that used to bother you, it's no longer bothering you. You are able to go through it waving your hand, giving God the glory, shouting for joy. Lord, Lord, I thank you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm not going to stop with that verse, 2 Timothy. Also, 3 and 17, it, sa it says this. Here's where, how we benefit from this. How we benefit. It says, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly or truly, furnished unto all good works. He continues, so we continue, he says, so we continue as we go through that you may be thoroughly furnished with all good works. And you do that by the confidence that you have in Christ in your life. Why do you think your trials come? Uh, why do you think they come when you think you are ready to go on? Here comes something else comes up. God is trying to build your and my confidence. Every time it seems like one foot goes up, I take two, three steps back. God said, don't fear. Don't be in despair. I'm just trying to build your confidence. When your confidence is strong, God said, I can do more for you. I can be Just a little twist today, just a little twist, wherein the focus today will be on that word confidence. So when the brother began to sing, I don't know where mother went in the song, but when they began to sing, Lord, I'm depending yeah. on you. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I'm depending. There's certain things I know that mama can do. But then things she can't do. And that's why our confidence should be in the Lord. And when I heard that, I said, well, Lord, you, you sent the brothers to let me know that what you have given me is on message. So our message from the Lord today is being established and grounded. That's not the subject. With overrunning confidence. The devil know when you just put him on. Come on, come on. He knows that. And that's why God doesn't allow you to go through so many that he knows you can't deal with it. But understand this. If, uh, uh, hear me clearly. And, and let me just ask you this question. Does the Lord want you to see yourself that you're not the only one? All of us that are dealing with some things in life I mean, it gets, it's getting tough. You're in the midst of it. Just, I mean, man, stand to your feet. Let the devil. See, the devil, the devil said, let, yeah, I see. I'm going to put more on you. See, now, see, that, that's over half of us. Let me get mine up. But I tell you, I still got joy. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all that I've yeah, been through, I still have my joy. So, here. So the Lord let me see it in this manner. He said, the more you are involved with, the more you are going through, it is because I am allowing it. You're stronger than what you were. You can deal with this. If you could not deal with it, I would not allow it to come upon you. But because you are stronger now, there's no man that has not gone through nothing that another man has not always gone already gone through. So God wants you to understand. Hey, confidence. You may be seated. I have to get a witness myself. I, you, and I must have complete confidence in the Lord. We, we must. We must, and it will come to naught if we don't. Here's how we have more confidence in things than we do in Christ. And let me just give you an example. When I hit my light switch at home, I expect, I've got confidence it's going to come on. Why? I paid my bill. 
But that doesn't mean a tree has not fallen across the line. But my confidence is still there. When I, when I go to my vehicle, uh, turn the switch, you know how Chevrolets are. They might crank and they may not. So I turn the switch and here we go. It, it's, uh, y'all okay. <laughs> so when I turn, you turn the switch, it, it hits for you. You got confidence in that. But when the doctor tells you <laughs> that something is wrong in your body, what is the first thing that we do? Oh, we have a pity party. We tell God, I don't know what God said. Come to me. Come to me. Establish your confidence in me. Establish who you are in me. Show me. Show yourself that you are trust. Don't you know your family is looking at you? Gene said, you can't have my, but yet and still you are the light that's in your family. And if they see you, oh God. So God wants to establish your confidence. Are y'all with me? So we should have complete confidence in God, believing that we can do all things through Christ, uh, who what strengthens us. So uh, our message again, I still haven't given you this subject. It is a must, it is a prerequisite that we be filled with God's spirit. I've already told you that. When we become giant killers, why? Because we're led by the Holy Ghost. Spiritual warriors. Those are not just words. We can become fearless in trusting God. And the devil knows who you are. He will mock you because he knows that you are strong in the Lord. That you are strong in his word. And when the devil sees that he has to take a detour when he comes to your house nobody's not saying nothing that means he's working with you confidence listen 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 at this confidence and it is by virtue of this what I just stated that our confidence will exude it, it, it will exude in other words it projects it goes beyond Measure. Confidence is to speak boldly in the Lord. It is to speak boldly in the Lord. Now, if you can't speak boldly in the Lord, then you're not strong in his word. Because his word will empower you to speak boldly of him. Hebrews 4 and 15 talks about, therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace we, uh, grace that we find grace and mercy to help in time of need so when you are bold in God's word it's not you that that's the strength it is God's word speaking through you you can utilize the word of God and build your confidence in it and this is the only thing that God wants us to understand build your confidence as we go forward to speak boldly in the Lord and in defense of his presence. In the world today, we are dealing with some stuff. Now let the people of God shout glory. We are dealing with some stuff. I refer to Luke's inspired penmanship out of the book of Acts when he referenced Peter and John being brought before the magistrates and other religious leaders. They were questioning them uh, uh, because of their continued preaching and teaching this new gospel message and Jesus being the centerfold. So they had set them in the midst and they straight forth threatened them that they would not. But the more they did, the more they preached. And the scripture talks about how they spake with boldness. How they lifted their voice with boldness. Acts 4, 29. Now behold to also the Lord their threatenings and grant unto us your servants that with all boldness that we may or they may speak your word. In other words, they reference right back to the word. Why? Because they had the spirit in them. They had the anointing in the presence of God on them where they weren't afraid to tell somebody, yes, Jesus lived. I trust him. I believe him. The devil must understand Stand from you when you speak you're speaking of the oracles of God not of yourself give him some glory everybody these these brothers Peter and John were bubbling over with confidence 
do you not see that we need this same confidence? Yes. Moses had it. Abraham had this confidence. Oh, my God. David had this confidence in the Lord. He could speak these things. Peter had this confidence. He was bold in his speaking. Paul the apostle had this confidence. We need this. We need this in our lives. We need confidence. I want you to understand, saints of God, that you can have this confidence. You don't have to worry about getting more or less than somebody else. You can build your confidence in the Lord. Hey, man, everybody clap your hands again. We have the same capabilities that all of those men that I mentioned. There were some women of God that were filled with the Holy Ghost that had confidence in God. and They were willing to go all the way with him. Uh, they had unwavering testimonies about him. And this is the message in essence for today. Complete confidence and trust that we can do exceeding in all that God has for us to do. So in Hebrews 10, I'm going to skip through that part, but from verses 33 down, the author is not noted. The author is not noted. We do not know scripturally who wrote Hebrews. Many debates said that it was Paul. Don't get in an argument about that. It's not worth it. But this is what we can say. The book of Hebrews, it is written in the annals of the Bible. It is established, the word of God. So here in Hebrew, the author conveys a powerful message uh, to his readers, reminding them of their past experiences. Understand where you come from. Some of us were some ruffians in life. I know you're trying to hide behind your religion now. <laughs> you try, but we were some ruffians in life. But look at God. God looked beyond all of what I was. He looked beyond all of what I have said and done. What this song it shows Steve Harvey when everyone else around me saw the worst in me. Lord, you saw the best in me. And I am thankful that God saw the best in all of us. Because if he would have looked at that mess and kept it there. But see, the Lord is not like people. Some of us would not let other folk know and let them forget where they come from. All of us has a checkered past. But God forgave us the word. And so now he has confidence in us that we will become men and women of his work. Here we are today. The writer reminds them even of his internment. This is where a lot of people think that Paul, Paul wrote this because he made reference to his imprisonment and how they even sufficed, sacrificed and brought him provisions. And they were going through a lot of things of being ridiculed and talked about these people, this letter that was written to. But he wanted them to understand, I appreciate what you have done and how you have stood by me. And through all of this, it brought them closer to Jesus. And so he writes verse 35. Now, don't cast away your confidence now because you're going through trouble. That he said, remember what confidence was? Complete trust and faith in someone or a person. It, confidence. He said, don't cast away now your, your confidence. You have seen what the Lord can do. Then look what he said, which has great recompense. Great recompense. What? What, what do you mean? What do you mean, right? Great recompense of reward. You, 36 says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Confidence. Confidence. Confidence in him great confidence of reward Lord 
And it says, you will be richly rewarded because of your trust in him. I hear I am. Our message today, I know that I can. It's your confidence. I know that I can. It's, it's your confidence. Uh, recompense. Now, understand, let me try to break this up real quickly and then we'll be done. Recompense, recompense as a verb. I wasn't that good in English like, like some folk are, but I, I, I do try to learn as I grow. Uh, recompense as a verb, it, it means to make amends to someone. In other words, to remember, in return, do something for them. For loss or harm, suffered, and to compensate them for that. So the writer said that your confidence has a great recompense. In other words, God sees your labor of love. He sees that you're working for him and you're trusting him. You do not think that God will not bless you? Ah, God. So here is where we are. And as a noun, here's what it means. Compensation or reward given for loss or having suffered or an effort made. So whatever we deal with, whatever we are going through, God is able to give us back so much the more. Ah, bless him right there, everybody. God knows our labor of work for him and serving him. Yes, there are times that it may seem that we're losing the battle. But that's just the time to serve him more. The devil wants me to give up in the heat of the battle. I have complete confidence in the Lord. I know that I can because it's my confidence in him. Let me just finish with a couple of more scriptures. David says in Psalms 20, 6 and 7, the English Standard Version, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. And when God's anointing is upon you, regardless of who you are, people may not think you're anointed, but you don't have to worry about what they think. Because it is your anointing. It is what God has given you. He will answer him from his holy heaven. What David said, with the saving might of his right hand. Uh, verse 7, some trust in, uh, listen, some Trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. Confidence, confidence, somebody shout, confidence. Hey, thank you, Jesus. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. So some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. We need this kind of confidence, saints. That's all I am telling you. If you want your life to be richly blessed, spiritually and naturally, trust God. Build your confidence in him. I am a living witness that God will honor you when you show and exhibit confidence in him him. Praise him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I give honor to you. And I know that I can. I know that I can because it's your confidence. Saying with me, I said I, I would choose what uh, last Sunday we talked about. I know that I can because the word says that I can. Let's just be honest. All of us can build our confidence, and we need that. When you show God that you don't trust him, what, what does that leave God to do for you? When I show God, Lord, I don't know if you're going to bring me out of this or not. What is that? And we don't have to say it in words, but what is revealed, it is how we respond. It is how we do confidence confidence. I got faith in God to believe that even with reach out, we're coming through this. We're coming out of this. I can look over the congregation and it gives me more confidence. Don't think that you're losing out just because you've given yourself for the Lord. Trust him. Show your confidence. Remember what I said out of Mark chapter 29 on last Sunday. And it is, it is as Jesus stated. He says, there is not one of you 
that has given up houses, land, brother, sister, wife, children for my sake and the gospels? None of you have given it up. He said that I will not bless you now 100 fold. In other words, I will give you 100 times more what you feel you have given to me. It, this time, now, that's what God will do for us. I just wanted to just convey what he said. And when the brothers come talking about singing that song, Lord, I'm depending on you. I say, well, thank you, Jesus. Shout with me, everybody. I know that I can. It's your confidence. But I want you to say, it's my confidence. It's my confidence. Now, the word says it has great recompense of reward. What God has for you, it is for you. Nobody else will get it. Nobody else can't have it. What you have given to God, he said, I will in no wise turn away from you. I will not cash you away from me. How strong do you want it? How strong are you trying to get confidence? You can be what you say you want to be. Strengthen yourself in the word. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. I repeat, strengthen yourself in the word. Strengthen yourself in your walk with God in your prayer life. There is nothing that God will withhold from you. The scriptures say there is no good thing. He will withhold from them that love him. In other words, has confidence in him. I know that I can. I know that I can. It's my confidence. As you stand by your heads and just close your eyes, just that is just a way of sort of closing everybody else out and even things. Just lay your hand on yourself. Jesus. Jesus, lay your hand on yourself. Now, if you don't have confidence in yourself, Lord, just repeat after me. Lord, increase my confidence in you. Increase my confidence in you. Saying those words, saying it from your heart, you can move the Lord to work on your behalf. If you ask him to do it for you, and he does it, and he can start it right now, you will find yourself going to new heights and new places in Christ Jesus. I know that you can because your confidence will get you there. Your confidence will keep you there. Your confidence will make a way for you to grow more in, Lord, in the Lord. Your confidence will bless you to have more in life. Your confidence in him will increase you with favor from God. And his others will be able to see that you are brimming with confidence. Maybe there are one, two or so that are here today. You're looking for a ministry. You're looking for a church to just... Get through this phase of your life. I, I, I don't all of the time advocate, reach out, is that church for you? But we welcome you if you so desire. Because there are other churches all around Henry County, Martinsville, Pennsylvania County. And we have folk here from Greensboro, Kerners Hill, all around us. Other places, Lynchburg, Alta Vista, Gretna, Chatham, Rono, here. But I praise God for you. Thank God for your presence. But choose a church. I believe you'll be okay with reach out. I believe that you will. We don't have all perfect people. And I'm certainly one of them that's not perfect. But I am striving every day to be what God needs me to be. And remember... Do not look at the word perfect as what the Webster's Dictionary say. When you're pleasing God, then you can walk in perfection. That's what he's saying. 
in essence. Maybe there are those that are here right where you are. You can lift your hands and you can come to the altar. You know, old traditional ways, you come and giving your hand to the preacher. I'm not saying that's still not an effect. But things are changing. People are changing. We all are changing. But I am encouraging you to build your confidence in the Lord. Are you here today? Anyone desire prayer, just wave your hands where you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak words over you. Whatever your needs are, whatever your desires are in the Lord, if it's for sickness, I pray in Jesus' name. I come against it, speaking the word of God, pleading under the blood of Jesus over your situation. If it is problems that are problems that you're going through, he is a problem solver. Just turn it over to the Lord and he will work it out. I have confidence. I believe. I trust God that he will work on your behalf. Father, bless them all. Bless this congregation. I pray continually in Jesus' name. May the Lord keep you. May heaven smile upon you. May the Lord bless you until we meet again. God bless you. You're in the hands of those that will direct you out. Let me remind everybody that will be those of us that will be out in our parking lot on this Saturday starting at 7 o'clock a.m. And uh, we will be having a yard sale here. We have that. We didn't have it last year, but we will have it this year. So desire to come. Come on out and be a part of that. Next Saturday. Elder Baba, I don't know if she's still going to have a truck or not. Will you have it out next Saturday, the Elder? You won't be able to? Okay. That's all right. We'll work it out. God bless you.